Sea turtles have been around for millions of years. In fact, sea turtles have been coming to lay their eggs on our beaches in Florida long before the dinosaurs were even walking around. Sea turtles that were hatched here in Florida, 20 to 30 years later, when it's time for them to come lay their eggs, they're gonna come back to Florida. Florida is home to more nesting loggerhead sea turtles than just about any place else on Earth. And so our beaches here in Florida are very, very critical when it comes to conserving loggerhead sea turtle. A female sea turtle is about 20 to 30 years old when she comes to nest for the first time. So it's a big event for her to come out of the water and lay her eggs. So what does nesting really look like? Well, a female waits till it's nice and dark and quiet on the beach because then she has a greater probability of no one disturbing her when she's coming to lay her eggs. She's gonna make her way up to the highest part, so she should be trying to nest near the, the top of the dune. And then she'll begin to dig what's called a body pit. She'll use her front and back flippers to start digging a hole in the sand so that she can get her eggs nice and deep. Once she's finished digging her body pit, she's gonna use her back flippers and just her back flippers to dig the nest chamber. Once she finishes digging her nest chamber, she'll put her little flippers on the side of the nest chamber and she'll start to lay her eggs. She will lay between 100 to 120 ping pong sized shaped eggs into that nest cavity. And it's the most amazing thing to watch. Once she finishes covering with her back flippers, then she'll then use her front flippers to throw sand to actually cover exactly where her eggs are to disguise it from predators. She'll spend a lot of time throwing sand so that she can make sure her eggs are very well covered and not visible to anybody. Once she's finished, she's gonna turn around and head back to the ocean. Well, if you're a person walking down the beach, you could potentially disturb this female that's waited 20 to 30 years to lay her eggs. You don't wanna do that. We wanna give these females a fighting chance so that they can come up and lay their eggs. Disney's Animal Programs monitors seven miles of beach on the east coast of Florida near Disney's Vero Beach Resort. And this is an opportunity for us to monitor all the sea turtle nesting activity in this area, as well as conduct some of our research projects. We work very closely with both state and federal agencies to help protect sea turtles. As part of the work that we do, we monitor all the sea turtle nesting activity. So any sea turtle that comes up to lay her eggs on our beach, we count. And then we'll take a subset of those nests and we'll actually monitor to see how successful they are. So we'll go in after the eggs have hatched and we'll count how many actually hatched and how many eggs didn't hatch. And the great thing about it is that we have a very high um, survival rate on our beach. Well, when the hatchlings emerge about two months later, they will all hatch at the same time. So imagine 100 to 120 little hatchlings coming out of the uh, nest, and it looks like a little volcano erupting full of little baby sea turtles. And the hatchlings make their way to the ocean, and they go as fast as they possibly can. Once they hit the water, they are gonna swim for about 24 to 48 hours. They call it a swim frenzy because they're trying to get out as far as possible. And they will spend their time now in a lot of the sea weed that's out there so they can stay nice and covered and not be visible to predators. Sea turtles are faced with numerous challenges out there in the ocean. You know, they're plagued with, unfortunately, all the, the trash that's out in our oceans. So when hatchlings emerge and they make their way to the water, they start looking for the floating sargassum or seaweed that's just floating on the surface. But unfortunately, one of the things that we're finding is that seaweed and sargassum is full of lots of plastic and trash. The little sea turtles will start to take bites and that's how the plastic ends up in their bellies. We had a sea turtle wash ashore and he was a young turtle about three to five years old. And we called him Little Crush and he was really just a mess. He had 70 pieces of plastic in his belly. He had everything from plastic balloons to plastic bags to fishing line, you name it, it was in his belly. And that had actually compacted so that he couldn't eat anything. So he was one sick turtle. But the good news is we were able to get all of that out of his belly and he was able to start eating again and we put a little transmitter on him and we released him and we were able to follow his movements. This is a transmitter that we use on adult females. And basically the way it works is that when the sea turtle comes up to take a breath of air, these switches are then activated and it sends a signal to our NOAA satellites and we'll get a location point that we can then put on a map. We were able to track where Little Crush spent his time, and just south of the resort is a great feeding area for sea turtles. There's a worm rock reef that has lots of sea grasses and things that young sea turtles like to eat. And that's typically where Little Crush spent the majority of his time. 
Lights are a real issue for sea turtles. When females are coming to nest at night, they're looking for a nice, dark, quiet place to lay their eggs. And when the little hatchlings emerge about two months later, what they're looking for is the brightest thing that they can see, and that should be the moon shining on the water. If there are lights shining behind them, unfortunately, the little hatchlings get disoriented, and they will head towards the brightest light that they can see, so they may end up in the dunes and never make it back to the ocean. In collaboration with the Caribbean Conservation Corporation, we're partnering in a great program called the Tour de Turtles, sort of like the Tour de France, but it's for turtles. What we're able to do is um, put a transmitter on a sea turtle that has recently nested near our resort and track where she spends her time. Each of those turtles get to swim for a specific cause, and these are all causes that are challenges for sea turtle survival. So our goal is really trying to educate people about what they can do to help sea turtles. What we want to do is make sure that our beaches are safe for turtles. And so we're going to be talking to people about the importance of keeping your lights off on the beach, not walking on the beach with flashlights at night, and keeping your curtains closed so that there's no light from your hotel room or your condo or your home shining on the beach at night. Sea turtles have been around for millions of years, but unfortunately their populations are dramatically declining. Places where they can come and lay their eggs, our beaches, are declining as well. Between hurricanes and all the erosion that we're facing and with all the construction on our beaches, there's not a lot of space left for sea turtles. At Walt Disney World, we're very committed to making a difference for wildlife and wild places and getting the next generation involved in caring for wildlife. So our work has really been about educating people and protecting our beaches so that sea turtles will continue to have a future in the wild.